welcome to another up close video. So I've actually wanted to do this video for quite some time um, and I thought today is the perfect opportunity for me to do the video because I wanted to do this showing you all of the different ink blending tools that Tonic have come out with and they have just launched their brand new ink blending tool so I thought doing this video and adding the brand new one on the end uh, would be you know a great opportunity to actually um, get round to making this video for you. So I want to show you um, the kind of differences and like positives of all the different kind of ink blending brushes that are out there on the market as well as introducing you to the brand new one from um, Nuvo and Tonic. So um, they've had their blending brushes out for a while and they were originally these kind of ones. They did have a black handle to begin with and then they've rebranded them um, and it's a, so it's a double-ended brush with kind of stiffer bristles and the idea is that you can use these with your Nouveau mousses and stuff as well as your ink pads. So I'll show you that one first and then there's also the smaller version of these brushes that they also brought out with the little um, handles. Again these used to have wooden handles uh, I don't think I've... Oh, I've got one here. So they used to have wooden handles like this, but now they've rebranded them um, with the gorgeous Nouveau logo in the um, grey plastic. And then, as well as bringing those out, they also brought out the little mini ink blending tools, which have the little foam that goes on them too. And then most recently, they brought out these two packs, and I've been saving these two brand new packs. I treated myself to... Um, three sets of each of them I think or maybe four sets of the big ones um, and I've been saving these two brand new sets so that I could show you them brand new um, in this video and now I finally got around to doing it I can actually open these um, but they're these gorgeous um, they're called toothbrush style brushes um, and they're brilliant for ink blending they make stenciling so crisp and gorgeous and they're really easy to use but um, there are some people who, if you have problems gripping things in your hands or applying lots of pressure, um, I think these are a little bit difficult to use and get like the beautiful um, crisp impressions and stuff, which is why they have now also brought out this large blending brush, which I will show you in more detail as the last thing in the video. But this is the brand new brush they brought out. I've only got one um, and I can't wait to get some more because I haven't I haven't tried it yet. I wanted to film this video and give you a proper like first impressions look at this and also um, show or like you know, just test out for myself how you can clean off the colour so that you wouldn't need one for every colour. You could just have um, like a warm one and a cool one maybe or a neutral one as well. Um, so I'll show you that towards the end of the video but I wanted to go through all of the other bits and pieces first so we can really see how they compare to each other because I thought it would be really interesting to show that. So I've got six pieces of cards and I thought I'd also um, use the Crackling Campfire Distress Ink because I just got this as well and it's the brand new Distress Ink colour so I thought I would give that a go with all of these um, different tools and also the thing about using distress inks or distress oxides is you will either want to keep the brush just for that colour, I mean with these brushes or with the ones that have the foams on them that's really easy to just keep one for that colour. Um, but if we're, if we're going to be testing out this one, I want to see how well the ink um, will, wash off, will wash off of it so that you can change colours because these are a water-based ink. So if you then put another, like say you switched from this one to a, a light blue, um, if you don't clean the brush first, there's still going to be some of the red ink left on the brush which the blue ink is then going to reactivate so you'll get a muddy kind of a colour. Um, but with some inks, so if you used the Nouveau inks to blend with, which do actually blend really nicely, um, you wouldn't have to worry about cleaning the brushes because although they would look the colour, like this one looks more yellow because I was using yellow ink on it, the ink won't actually transfer because that ink dries permanent. So even if you put another wet colour of ink on top of the brush that has dried with the ink on it, the colour won't muddy and transfer because the colours are permanent. Whereas with the Distress Ink, we're going to have to want, well, we're going to want to wash it off so that we can use a different colour with it, unless you have a lot of the brushes and you can keep them all the same colour. Um, but anyway, so I've got six pieces of card here and I'm going to write on the top of them, where's my biro gone, um, what, what we're using. So we're going to use the double-ended brush. Then we're going to use the mini brush. And by brush I mean the um, 
ones with all the bristles on. Then we're going to use the mini um, ink blending tool. These aren't their actual names, but <laughs> this is just what I refer to them as. Which So this is the mini ink blending tool. And then we've got the toothbrush dial. And then we've also got the brand new brush as well. So I'll just call that brand new brush. So we've got five different ones to test out and I'm going to show you just the ink blending with them and then also through a stencil to show how like um, the different blended effect that you get with different ones. For example, these ones give a kind of a scratchier look because they are um, more stiff bristled, whereas these give a much smoother look because they are the gorgeous, smooth, um, soft, den high density kind of brushes. Um, and I'm also going to show you through a stencil. I have actually still got the packaging for this one so I can tell you what the name is. It is the Full Bloom stencil that I'm going to use today because I thought it's got um, some like sharp little areas in it that um, should hopefully show off the precision of the gorgeous um, high density soft bristled brushes which these they have the same bristles these two brushes they're just different in the ergonomics of using them um, and for the ease of use because sometimes being this far away but you're adding the pressure up here you might be tempted to hold the brush up here which in that case you might be better off getting this kind of a brush because the handle is over the top of the bristle so you know it would make more sense to have that brush but anyway so let's start and um, hopefully this video isn't all over the place but um i just thought it would be a, a nice video to show the differences between all the different blending tools and it just worked out perfectly that um tonic have brought out a brand new um blending tool as well so the um, the double-ended brush and the mini brush are going to give us very similar results but again it's all down to how you're holding it and stuff because this is double-ended it's heavier it's more like back heavy and you've got to hold it more as if it's a big chunky pen or something whereas with this one you can actually hold over the top of it so you're going to get different pressure I guess applied to it um, to do your ink blending and all of the ones I'm going to use I mean this has got a little bit of ink in it that was the sponge I was going to use um, they're mostly like new ones that haven't got any ink in so um, or I could actually use that one actually because it's already got a red colour um, but if you were keeping them for the same colour the ink would gradually build up in these so you wouldn't have to apply as much ink as your like when you're using them but if you wash out the brushes you're then going to have to kind of like reload them as you're using them as well so it depends um, how often you ink blend and how often you switch between colours you might be the kind of crafter that really loves a certain colour palette and uses that all the time so in which case you might want a separate brush for each of those colours whereas with me I do like to use the entire rainbow when I'm working um, not necessarily all on one card but I do like to use like every single colour um, so for me I'm going to want to have like maybe three or four of these brushes so that I can switch between warm and cool tones and stuff as well. Um, but anyway, let's get on with actually showing you what I was supposed to be showing you. So, all that, that's really um, picked up the ink really nicely actually. I, I don't use these that often for ink blending because I do tend to, or I used to always go for the mini ink blending tools, but now I do tend to go for the toothbrush style brushes. Um, but we'll see how this ink blends. I think it does give a sort of a scratchy finish. It does give a nice blend actually though. You do get the lighter colour, but it is more of a, a textured kind of a blend, I suppose, to what you can get with other brushes. Although a lot of inks, actually, especially with the Nuva Hybrid inks, if you have got a kind of splotchy result when you've been ink blending with whatever tool you decide to use, um, just leave it sometimes. Just put the card off to one side, leave it, come back to it, and you'll find that the ink blending has smoothed out over time because it kind of like absorbs more into the card as it's drying and it gives a smoother look. So if you're not happy with your um, initial blend straight away, do try leaving it and coming back to it and seeing if you prefer it because sometimes some inks do like to um, take longer to settle into the card and it's especially the ones that are more for stamping rather than techniques and stuff like distress inks. The Nouveau ones are more for stamping rather than blending but they do blend nicely you just have to sort of leave them wait for them to settle. 
So that is how or what the big blended brush looks like. And that ca crackling campfire is a gorgeous colour. It's really pretty. But that is the kind of blend you get with one of these blending brushes. Um, it is more like scratchy and round the edges. It's more, um, I suppose, you can see the kind of bristle marks really. And let's try it through the stencil as well. You can get a nice graduated tone with these too and you can get quite um, soft looks or it doesn't actually take too much effort to build up the colour as well. But you, you do get a pretty good um, impression or like a, a pattern coming through. Although the edges aren't as crisp as they could be. I mean in some places they are but depending on if you're wanting a light colour or a darker colour um, you might have to go for a darker colour to get the crisp edges that you want. But that's pretty good actually, using just this brush. So let's move on to the next one. So now we're going to try with the little mini brush. So we can just ink that up. Uh, oh wow, okay. <laughs> this is a lot more scratchy than the one we just tried. It could be because of where the handle is and what kind of pressure you're applying to it. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not that used to blending with these brushes. And it's not as easy, actually. I don't know whether it's because there are less bristles. Yeah, there are way less bristles in the small brushes. So maybe it's not as easy to get that smoother edge to a blend when using these small brushes. But saying that, these are great for all sorts of other applications because, again, you can use your mousses with them. You can also use them to burnish your gilding flakes and also, like, brush off excess gilding flakes. Because, you know, like... If you stamp with a sticky ink or maybe you die cut something intricate out of a sticky sheet and stuck it down and you want to put the gilding flakes on top of it, sometimes the gilding flakes go across two sticky areas um, because it's like a whole flake and it hasn't come off in the area that it hasn't stuck to between those two sticky parts. If you use a brush like this, you can really get those excess um, bits of flake off to reveal the actual detailed image as well so that's what these kind of brushes are really good for but if you want this kind of um, slightly more textured look they are great for that too it just depends what kind of look you're going for you might want the textured look rather than the completely smooth blend that one of the other options might give you um, and let's show through a stencil as well see I don't think this is going to give as nice of a stenciled impression and I'm going around in all different angles to try and get um, the whole design to fill in. But, oh no, that's not too bad actually. And that is pretty good. So that is the kind of stenciling that you get with this one. If we compare the big brush with the little brush, they're not too different. I think this one was easier for me to blend out than having the smaller brush. But again, it's got less bristles, but it's also how you would want to hold your blending tool. This one you hold more like a pen, this one you hold over the top of the brush. So that's a little difference between that. Okay, then the next one to try is the mini ink blending tool, which was always my go-to. This is actually just a yellow sponge that's on here, but it's just the one that I've got because I haven't um, given one to the crackling campfire yet. Um, but this was always my go-to for ink blending, but I do find that the toothbrush ones are now my go-to um, over these, although I do still use them, especially if you want to do um, like cool techniques like this and getting circle designs on your project. These kind of tools are fabulous for that. Um, but let's do a little bit of blending with this. So you, I mean, you don't get as smoother edges with an ink blending tool like this, but you can get down a lot of um, colour in a very short amount of time. I suppose these ones are maybe more for um, really good blending if you're blending edge to edge on something. If you just want a, um, a diffused area of colour in the centre of a card, I do recommend these kind of brushes. But for um, going completely across the card, edge to edge, these ones are fabulous because they lay down a lot of ink really quickly and you do get a nice um, smooth result and you can also go back and forth between a couple of colours and blend them out really nicely. So that's the kind of blend you get with that and if we compare it to the brush blend you can see there is more colour and I don't know if you can really tell. I think there is a bit less texture when you're blending it. Um, 
and then let's see how it works with the stencil. With a stencil with these, I think uh, I tend to go for a pouncing motion, but let's try circular motion. The only thing with a circular motion is you might um, destroy your foam pad quicker. If you're going in a circular motion, you might, uh, especially with um, stencils that have more like little sharp details, um, you might bend the stencil or you might dig the bits of stencil into the foam and pick bits out of it. Um, so it's kind of thinking about what kind of stencil you're using and stuff to whether you go in a circular motion or whether you pounce as well. Um, but the great thing about these tools compared to the brushes you can use paint with these. I wouldn't use paint with the brushes because they're so lovely and soft bristled you wouldn't want to clog all of that up with paint but with these um, stiffer bristle brushes or with these ones you can use them with paint and you can use these with your mousses as well. Um, so there are definitely different advantages um, to different brushes as well and different blending tools. But um, So this is going around in a circle down here and then over here I'm going to pounce it and see you do get more of a, a, maybe a twist and pounce. So we're actually getting a really heavy application here but I think we're going to get some nice crisp results on that too. So you can, with these ink blending tools, you can do cool circle effects, which could be in ink or paint or um, the mousses or the glacier paste as well. Obviously, you'd have to wash the sponges out with using those paints and stuff because they will dry um, hard in the sponge and then you'll kind of have to throw it away. Um, but you can use all those kind of things with them. And then, so this is just the ink blending. This is going in a circular motion through the stencil and you can see... Um, there is quite good definition here, maybe it's a little bit um, hazier in this bottom corner, but if you do the pouncing method you get a lot crisper and more colour put down quickly as well for your stenciling. So I'm hoping you can kind of see the difference between the circular motion and the pouncing. I think it does give a, a crisper result. So that is the mini ink blending tool which used to be my go-to um, for any ink blending and I do still use it. And then let's go on with the toothbrush style. So obviously um, with these ones there are two different packs that Nouveau do. There is, um, this pack is just, okay they're just called a two pack and a four pack. So the two pack has the largest size in and a, a lovely smaller size uh, which is actually really useful for different detailed kind of areas. And then the four pack has four more different sizes which are also absolutely perfect for any um, fine detail work. If you got any of the stencils uh, that Tonic did that came with the stamp and the stencil, if you, if you stamp the image first, you put the stencil over the top, to get into all of the different detailed areas, like for example if you wanted to colour the flower pink and the foliage green, these brushes are perfect for that. These kind of ones, perfect for foliage, because it's usually more in a long kind of a shape. The circles, absolutely perfect for little flowers. And again, this one for any sort of larger flowers, or even just if you wanted to rainbow ink blend this background, this kind of size and maybe this size as well are brilliant for controlling the ink in a smaller kind of area as well. So I, I think all of these little sizes are absolutely brilliant for um, any kind of precision ink blending through a stencil or even um, for creating different marks in your background as well actually because um, you know what, what we did with the mini ink blending tool, you can even do sort of circle kind of effects with um, these ones too. I mean you can do a concentrated dot and then blend out the edges for a different kind of like maybe a bokery kind of a background as well. So there's loads of different um, reasons for having these different shapes of brushes. Um, I did buy more packs of these ones because I know I like bigger brushes and I like to have a whole rainbow's worth of brushes um, so that I can keep using them. Whether I have the whole rainbow just in the big or I have a big and a small for each, depending on what kind of colours I use the most. I do use blue a lot and um, I tend to use green quite a lot too, so I do have um, 
a this size and this size for a blue and a green because I, I know that I use those a lot um, because obviously a blue sky and green grass on a card you know that's kind of a go-to kind of a colour scheme um, but again I think they're pretty good value actually and they are actually better quality than the cheap ones that you can get on Amazon I have a set of the cheap ones and these are much like weightier and sturdier than the cheap ones that I brought so um, I do think they're worth the price for them as well and the ease of blending is brilliant with them too I do really love using them um, I must have had them for like 18 months I know the Nouveau ones have only been out maybe six months or something um, but I think I must have had the cheapy ones for like a year before that and I did always um, tend to gravitate towards them they're just so easy to grab on the desk next to you. I actually have them in just two little pots like this. Um, and they're just so easy to grab the colour one that you want as well. Uh, which is perfect for all of your card making as well. And especially when you don't really know what you're doing. Um, you know, what kind of card that you're making. Just grabbing a brush and adding a bit of ink to it can really change the style of the card. Or even if you have die cut lots of things out of... Uh, white cardstock these actually are much easier to use to color the white die cuts because I tend to put too much pressure on these and I end up like ripping the fine detail on a die cut whereas with the brushes the bristles kind of get down all of the sides and it's much quicker and easier to add color to your die cuts using these this kind of a brush as well so anyway I've rambled on quite a bit um let's add some of this gorgeous crackling campfire to this brush and with these as well actually I do tend to tap the ink off on my glass mat and kind of blend it into the bristles a little bit more to get a kind of smoother blend for these and I do try to use less pressure I don't I don't know actually maybe I do use the same amount of pressure you can see actually as I'm holding that I am tending to put some pressure on the actual head of the brush rather than just holding it down here um, which is interesting because I hadn't really noticed that I did that um, before so I think the new style of brush is going to be really useful but you can see how gorgeous of a soft blend that you can get with these brushes I mean I inked that up as much as I inked up the mini ink blending tool but in comparison you get a much softer color but you can easily build it up as well um, I think now I do think the edges are much smoother with this brush I mean you I don't know if the camera can even see how the gradient is coming out of there and it might look a little bit splotchy that could be the card that you're using or it could just be um, you know just leave it and wait for a while and it will be a lot smoother when you come back to it as well so there's multiple different reasons why you might have a blotchy look I recommend just leaving it and coming back and seeing what you think or you could then try another type of card if you didn't like the look that you were getting from it um, but then yeah you can also build up the colour so we can add a little bit more colour on the brush and focus it in the center and drag it out to build up that gorgeous rich tone and it really doesn't take much effort to build up that color you've got a beautiful blend there and then let's show you with the brush I really do think this is where these brushes excel is getting into all the fine detail on a stencil they're just so brilliant for getting every single little detail and you can go really lightly as well if you don't press as hard or put as much pressure on you can go lightly but you still get the beautiful um, crisp pattern but then you can also ink up a bit more and get really heavy colour still with the crisp pattern as well so you can see there just how beautifully crisp that is and that was like no effort whatsoever whereas with the mini ink blending tool we did get that crisp look but we had to think about how we were using the blending tool rather than going around in a circular motion we had to pounce the ink on and twist it whereas this one you're just going with the circular motion and you get the beautiful crisp images straight away which is a really big plus and even over the top of the ink blending we've still got a crisp image on there too so uh, that is my main love for these brushes is using them with a stencil and getting that really crisp result or using them as 
maybe if I want to do a wonky strip down a card or I want to do just a strip down the middle or just a circular element they give such a beautiful diffused edge to your ink blending that these are absolutely perfect for that kind of a look as well. So now I've talked about every other type of brush that Tonic has brought out in the last I don't know, the big, the double-ended brushes have been out for a long time and the wooden handled versions of these have but I think these have maybe only been around a couple of years. The time's going so quickly re recently, it's very difficult to tell how many years things have been out. But I think these are maybe like six months to a year, and these are probably a couple of years since they've been out. Um, but this is the main star of the video, that was the whole reason for doing the video. This is the brand new blending brush from Tonic. I've seen... Um, another brand of these, I think it's a black one, I'm not sure who the brand is, but I've seen other people using them and I've really wanted to give them a go, um, so I'm so pleased that Tonic have brought out one in this kind of design as well, um, and it's just called the Large Blending Brush, and the number is on there. I will make sure all of the brushes and blending tools are linked below the video as well, just in case you want to have a look at any of them, but 1949N is the number for this brand new brush. Um, it does say large, so I don't know if there's going to be two sizes, but this is the only one that I've got my hands on so far, um, and I'm sure I will. I ha still haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure I'm going to want more of these um, to give a, a to give me a few to switch between colours but look at the I, I just love Nouveau's packaging they've even like you've got that beautiful um, strong foam insert to keep them in I mean you're not even going to need that actually but it, it gives a, a beautiful display in the packaging they always have such beautiful packaging and even having the mirror card behind it it does make it so much more like elegant um, I just love their packaging. Um, but anyway, the actual brush comes with a stand. Yeah, see, one downside of these brushes is when you're keeping them in a pot together... Oh, I've, I've rubbed off the ink that was on that one. But when you're keeping them in a pot together, um, the ink can transfer. See, that's my pink brush, but I've got a little bit of a darker colour on there too. Or you can also get the ink transferring onto the back of them. Now I say that, none of them have got ink on the back of them. But... Um, that is one of the like slight downsides to these brushes is that um, they can contaminate each other. If, if you see the green has got a little bit of pink on it, um, it, it doesn't uh, really affect it too much when you're ink blending. But you know that can happen. But with these brand new ones, you've got the beautifulness of this um, high density, um, beautiful soft bristled brushes. But they come in their own little holder and the brushes aren't even touching the bottom so the holder's not going to get dirty which is nice as well and you've got the beautiful ergonomic design of the handle of the brush too and these will look beautiful lined up on your shelf um, I mean you could have them this way around you could even stick a label over the top or underneath here with what colour depending on how many brushes um, you would want to invest in I mean maybe you haven't found your perfect ink blending brush yet that you want to buy a whole set of to do all of your colours and this might be the one for you um, but I mean having all of these on your shelf or whatever kind of unit or desk that you have all of your um, blending tools and inks on um, this way round is going to look really lovely with labelled or you can keep it this way round and you'd actually just be able to see what the colour is on the bottom of the bristles of the brush as well so this is my first go at trying this brush so I'm going to do what I just did with the other ones and I'm going to try ink blending with it just you know from the ink pad to here and then also through the stencil and then I'm going to try and clean it as well because I only have one so I'm going to want to clean it and swap to different colours as well so let's give this beautiful new brush a go it picks up colour really nicely it's picking it up really well it's actually really nice because um, it's the perfect size for a full sized distress ink pad it like fits on the actual ink pad perfectly so I've picked up some ink and then it's picked up more on the edges rather than the middle so I'm just going to do what I usually do with the high density kind of soft bristle brushes and swirl it around a little bit to try and distribute the colour a little bit more into the brush maybe add a bit more on and then let's give it a go it's really nice to hold actually having this handle Oh, I do really like that. I do think that actually gives a softer 
definitely gives a softer edge actually, even than these brushes, which is brilliant. And that's a really nice uh, light ink application, because I know a lot of the time, um, I do it as well, I get too heavy handed with it and I get a darker ink than what I wanted, but that is really beautiful. I put quite a lot of ink on that brush, but that has given a really lovely soft blend. We can see if we press harder, yeah, you see you can actually put quite a bit of pressure on and you're not getting the weird lines. And just as I say that, I get a little weird line. Um, but you can actually put quite a bit of pressure down, which is really nice. So even if you are a little bit heavy handed, you're still going to get that beautiful blended look. I do really like these, I'm definitely going to be buying some more of these. They are lovely. And again, you can just keep going over and build up the depth of colour like I was showing you with the toothbrush style brushes as well. That is really nice. That's almost like airbrush looking. That is really lovely. Okay, then the stencil test. Let's see how well this brush goes through the stencil. I think it's going to be as good as the toothbrush style ones because they are the same bristles. They're exactly the same colour and they feel exactly the same as well. So I think they're going to be brilliant for getting into all this fine detail. And we'll see how light we can go. If I keep a light hand and get all the way out to the edges. Because sometimes you do want some really subtle stenciling, um, but it's hard to get that really light um, impression and uniformly as well. And then we can just add some more ink to the centre of this too. To show the depth that we can get. And let's see how crisp that looks. Oh yeah, it's definitely just as crisp as those beautiful toothbrush style ones. And look at that beautiful fade and how gently you can ink blend and get the, still get the beautiful crisp stenciling. Oh, I really like those brushes. I'm definitely going to be buying some more of them. You'll be seeing them popping up in my videos. That is beautiful. I'm really impressed with that brush. I think these two are definitely the best kind of ink blending brushes that you can get. Um, well, that I have tried, that you know, that I've seen and I've tried. Um, and obviously, I think both are great to have in your collection for different um, uses that you might want to use them for. But um, it all comes down to how you hold your ink blending brush. Um, maybe whether you mind if your brushes touch each other and get contaminated or whether you really want um, an actual stand for them to sit in so they're not going to make anything mucky. There's Once that brush is in there, there is no chance that you're going to transfer ink onto your shelf or, you know, get muck anywhere really. This is going to keep it really nice and clean and um, mess free when, you know, when you're not using your brushes, which is brilliant. But again, um, I, I reckon they'll probably be about the same price, so the sort of pack of two of these would probably be the same price as one of these big brushes. So again, it's kind of down to um, how much you want to spend on your brushes and whether you'd rather have uh, a brush that comes with a case or two brushes to be able to use. So, um, But I really do think having a mixture of all of these kind of tools in your uh, craft stash is really brilliant because I do... I do actually use all of them, but for different things. So, for example, I do tend to gravitate towards this for ink blending or going through a stencil now because I have these over the mini ink blending tools. But, like I was saying before, if I was going to do something with paint or a Nouveau mousse or Glacier Paste, I would go for these tools. But if I was going to then, um, if I wanted a more textured look I would then go for these brushes or for the double ended brush so there's definitely a place on your desk for all of these different things um, so you don't necessarily need one for every colour and all the different things you can think about what kind of use that you use things for for example this one when I clean it in a minute I'm probably going to keep this for blue ink because now I, you know as I've only got one at the moment I know I use blue ink a lot and um, I can just you know, clean it if I want to between going from like distressing to distress oxide or um, if I use the Nouveau ink pads I know that I won't need to clean it but it will dye it a blue kind of colour. Um, but I think 
having a mixture of all these different things is really great because you can switch between them and you know what kind of colours you use the most and you can keep things for those specific colours in the specific style of applicator tool as well which is really brilliant. So um, let's give this a go for cleaning. Oh actually before I clean that shall I just show you um, the complete comparison. So we did that one first. So we've got the double ended brush, the mini brush, the mini ink blending tool, the toothbrush style brush which are these ones and then the brand new ink blending brush as well. You can really tell the crispness of the stenciling. How, look how, how crisp this is compared to using the stiff bristled brush. It really does make a big difference having the um, softer bristles to get through the detail and I just love how you can really get that pale um, look with the ink with this big round one but it's actually still perfectly crisp as well it's that pale but it's you know it's really crisp and uniform as well which is brilliant whereas with the mini ink blending tool it looks crisp if that was the only tool that you have that looks nice and crisp but then when you compare it to what you can get with one of these high density um, brushes you can see it is crisper with the brushes so I really do think um, all of these tools are brilliant for different applications and different reasons for different projects and stuff as well and even for different colours because I know if I'm using blue I'm going to want a really nice blended look because I usually use that for like a sky kind of background and I might ink blend over a cloud stencil or add a little bit of um, a pattern in the background to give it a little bit more interest um, whereas with um, the ink blending tools and the mini brushes I know I'm going to use that more for products other than inks maybe so like ink um, paints and more of the other Nouveau kind of products as well so they really do have their own place I probably just repeated myself like three times saying all of that but um, I'm rubbish at remembering what I just said but anyway that is all of the different styles of brushes and kind of how they compare to each other so let's try and clean this and we, we've even left that on there for a little while um, and we should be able to see a lot of the ink coming off of here so I'm pressing quite hard actually and it does still give a really nice subtle blend this is just scrap paper because you can clean these just with scrap paper if you then wanted to um, transfer maybe if you were going to a yellow or a red that's not too much different to the orange you could just um, brush it off onto scrap paper and then change colour and it shouldn't um, affect it too much um, have I got Um, I guess pink is probably the closest colour I've got within reach, um, you know, that wouldn't be too contaminated by the orange, so we could go in with a pink, and yeah, you see, you actually, you're actually getting that true pink colour, the orange isn't, um, affecting it too much, so you can see how you could just clean your brush off like that if you're just doing a single project and you want to switch between analogous colours which are all the ones that are next to each other on the colour wheel. Um, you can actually just clean it that much or you can go in with a baby wipe or like warm soapy water. You could run this under your tap and then leave it to dry um, and that would clean it really well. Or if you're working on a project or you're too lazy to get up like I am. Um, you can use a baby wipe to clean some more of the ink off. I don't, oh no, I was just going to say I don't know if we're going to actually get the colour completely out of this, but um, that is disappearing, so we might need a little bit of work to completely clean the orange out of here, and I think running it under um, the sink is probably going to be the absolute best way to try and get all of the colour out of this brush. But um, that's done a quite a good job. Actually, I've got some kitchen roll here. That's done quite a good job of um, cleaning that enough. Obviously, the bristles are now wet, so they're clumping together a little bit more. But as they dry, um, they'll all fluff up again, back to how it looked before. And actually, I want to see if I can get all this ink out. So I'm just going to go to the sink and run this under the sink and see if I can get all the ink out. Okay, so it's not dry but it hasn't removed 100% of the colour, but orange and red are very staining colours anyway, but it's not too far off the original bristle colour, 
my light is kind of <laughs> making the colour look like there's more on there than there is. But you can see it is got it's got pretty clean. And once that is dry, um, it will it will look exactly like it did before. It looks a bit <laughs> a bit funny being wet because they're all clumping together. Um, but yeah, so you can easily completely change what colour you're going to be using it for. Obviously if you're doing a background and you've only got one of these brushes and you want to do like an ombre kind of a colour, if you pick, if you stick to warm or cool colours, for example like yellow, orange, red or yellow, orange, pink or doing greens and blues together, you can just start with your lightest colour and keep adding the darker tones onto the brush as you go and then you won't need to wash between or you could just um, um, blend it off onto some scrap paper like I was just showing you as well but if you really want to like reset it completely um, to completely change the colour that you want to use it with for example going from a dark orangey red colour to then maybe using it with a really light blue or really light green um, you can just run it under the tap that was just cold water I was running it under with and once that's dry that will be absolutely perfect to use again and um, obviously you can just store them in here so if you didn't I mean if you if you did invest in like a whole set of them um, to have one for every colour family um, you could just keep them with their dirty bristles and then the colour would be already in the brush for when you want to use it so you don't have to use as much ink from your ink pad as well but I just wanted to show you that you can easily wash them out to change the colour um, with them as well so um, I think I've said everything I was planning on saying but I hope you enjoyed this video. I mean, I'm definitely going to be getting some more of these brushes because I do really love how they were ink blending. And this is this was my first um, impression of them. And I'm really impressed. I think they're... I don't know if I want to say better than the toothbrush style ones because they are the same um, bristles. But actually, the toothbrush style ones are in a dome shape. If you look at the side, it is domed, whereas with this one, it is completely flat because obviously to go in this holder, it's completely flat bristles. So they do give a different effect for getting that beautiful, like airbrushed, blended look um, to your ink blending as well. But I am a really big fan of this brush. So um, yeah, I just thought this video would be interesting. For those of you who haven't done much ink blending before, or those of you who might have struggled in the past, knowing the differences between the different kind of ink blending brushes that there are on the market or ink blending tools, I thought it would be quite helpful um, you know, for you to pick which kind of one that you might want to try using, and you might want to give this brand new one a go as well. Because, I mean, you can just buy one, see if you like it. If you don't, then you know, you've only bought one brush and you haven't invested in a whole rainbow of them. Um, but I do think they're definitely worth um, paying extra for this beautiful style of brush and with the housing as well. I mean, as well as not contaminating your other brushes that they're sitting next to, you're also not going to get ink on anything else. Because in the past, I have been working on my desk and you all know as a crafter, you have a specific amount of workspace and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you're working. And I've had like multiples of these out that I've been, you know, blending a coloured background and I've had them on the edge of my desk and with their coloured sponges on. And then as I've been working I've accidentally pushed something underneath and then you've got a, a massive ink splodge on there too but if you're working with these and they're on your desk and you accidentally push something up to it it's going underneath the holder it's not going to get on any of your work so um, I think they're brilliant for any of you that are really messy crafters like me um, you know they're, they're going to save you from getting mess on your work and even having these I haven't done it yet but if I had left this brush up this way and pushed a piece of card and it had gone underneath then it would have transferred ink as well so um, they're definitely better for messy crafters because they've got the beautiful case that they come with as well so yeah I really hope this video was useful for you and gave you I don't know if there was any sort of hints and tips in here for different kind of ink blending tools, but I might have told you a few products that you can use with other ones that you might not have thought of before. And um, I just thought it would be really good to show off this brand new brush as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope the video was helpful and I will see you again in the next one. Bye!